while journalist and Twitter Files author Matt Taibbi was testifying on Capitol Hill for Congressman Jim Jordan's weaponization of the government hearings on March 9th, IRS agents actually came to his doorstep claiming issues with his 2018 and 2021 tax returns that same day. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. Now, yesterday, Jordan sent a letter to IRS Commissioner Daniel Werfel and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen seeking an explanation for why Taibbi received this unexpected guest. Taibbi tweeted in response, for those asking, I don't want to comment on the IRS issue pending an answer to Cham Chairman Jim Jordan's letter. I'm not worried for myself, but I did feel the committee should be aware of the situation. So that's some pretty suspicious timing. Uh, the, uh, an IRS agent shows up uh, to ask him about some tax irregularities uh, around the same time that he is testifying on Capitol Hill about what he's uncovered vis-a-vis -vis the efforts by various government agencies to press their social media companies to suppress speech, specifically Twitter. Um, yeah, that sounds like an act of intimidation to me. Yeah, I mean, the act, regardless of the timing, it would be an act of intimidation. It's actually kind of odd that if there was a coordination that they wouldn't know that Matt Taibbi wouldn't be home <laughs> because he's testifying at this very public hearing. But regardless, you know, it, it's not a good look uh, to be arguing that Matt Taibbi is overreacting or somehow um, inaccurate when he describes the weaponization of the intelligence in agencies to influence social media and to have political influence more broadly, and then to have this kind of a presumed audit uh, appear literally at his doorstep. Now, is it, could it be a coincidence? Of course, anything's possible. Mm -hmm. Could it be the case that there are legitimate inquiries to be made here? Of course, it's possible. But this is the issue: when there are all of these instances lined up against each other, when you're able to, you know, weave together a narrative that's really compelling. When you point to the raid at Mar-a-Lago, when you point to the way Matt Taibbi is being treated here, it, it starts to become a presumption of guilt. And it's incumbent on the government to prove that it's actually um, running its agencies with the interest, the state interest of the agencies in mind, instead of trying to target various citizens who are going against the administration. Well, and because the tax code is so complicated, um, it's especially complicated for people who work odd jobs or multiple yeah. jobs um, uh, or freelance journalistic work like how Taibi operates. Um, I mean, now maybe he's more regular at Substack is probably his main source of income. But it would not be surprising to me if there's some technicality just, just because of probably the, the various sources of revenue he has. Uh, it's very easy for, again, procedural crimes. The government can always get you on some procedural issue, always. There's not a person on this on this earth who can swear, who could promise that they haven't done something technically in violation of an IRS statute or procedure because it's so tremendously complicated. And they leave yeah. it to you to figure it out. Yeah. They know it, but they leave it to you to figure it yes. out. Uh, so, uh, uh, and a forever reminder that the, the IRS could simply tell you how dumb. much you owe every year, but tax preparing companies, uh, tell TurboTax, spend millions of dollars in lobbying fees to make sure that that never happens and you still need to rely on their services. This is, this is how, uh, this is what's so pernicious about a kind of deep state um, uh, regime, mm -hmm. whereby they, you know, they don't harass or hassle everyone. Sometimes you can dissent. If you're not annoying them, it's fine. But they have a little file on you, maybe, or they, they have some tool they can use. If you cause, make too much, you cause too much, too many problems, you draw too much attention to yourself on social media or somewhere else, they go, well, what's the deal with that person? What do we know about that person? And there's always something. There's always something. And yeah. that's a, that, uh, again, Honestly, that is akin to what we criticize the Chinese government for operating yes. in that way. It is, it is happening. And look, I am, I am not trying to draw in my radar and other places I talk about this. I'm not trying to draw some false kind of comparison between the U.S. government and the Chinese government. I consider the Chinese government to be much more authoritarian than the U.S. government, um, including on the questions of speech. What, what the Chinese government allows its own citizens to have access to is less than us. But... Look, I have been blown away by the extent of the pressuring that various government, U.S. government agencies made. It, it was just so much more vast than we would have known about three years ago. Yeah, I mean, look, there is, there is an argument that when you have kind of a structural protections, like our constitutional speech protections, that it can provide a false sense of security, mm -hmm. uh, and that, frankly— Governments who want to venture into authoritarian waters are able to do so regardless of what 
technical prohibitions that are against it. And that what you end up with is just a system where the uh, abridgment of speech and these kind of what we perceive to be a fundamental rights is just more discreet uh, in a way that actually makes it more difficult to push back against the United States than in yeah. some other countries. And that, I mean, that, again, is a, an overstatement. But I, I, you know, I do think there's something to the idea that uh, a certain kind of um, pat legal protections can cause Americans to rest on their laurels and presume that they have certain rights intact that actually aren't. And I think your radar pointed to some um, the potential uh, harms that could come from what is the Restrict Act. Mm -hmm. um, and this is another scary moment. Again, we don't know exactly what happened here. Uh, Matt Taibbi is, I think, being wisely waiting to find out more before he says too much about this on the internet. But I think it, he's right. He, people are right to be suspicious about this, and I think the onus is on the government to prove that they're acting in good faith at this point. I knew someone uh, who used to uh, work with me at Reason Magazine and uh, who was very active writing about and reporting on police and criminal justice. And uh, he talked about once, I think he wrote about this, I'm pretty sure it's public, uh, the one time police just kind of visited house, his house just for no particular reason, it seemed, just kind of wanted to have a conversation with him and how frightening and alarming that was. Because the government has a lot of power to make your life miserable, just yeah. utterly miserable, to bog you down in, uh, in uh, IRS audits are a pain in the butt. Yeah, I mean, this is the argument that people have been making about uh, police activity uh, and the, mm -hmm. the cho choice to focus on certain neighborhoods largely predominantly black neighborhoods, that people feel like they've been under surveillance, that people who haven't done anything wrong are getting regular pat downs during the uh, kind of stop and frisk Bloomberg era in, in New York City. Uh, the stats were overwhelming. Basically, if you were a black man between the ages of like 18 and 35, you were patted down by the police at some point in, the, in any given year. Mm -hmm. And what that means is, one, you feel that same pressure. Any interaction can go the wrong way. We've seen this a million times with a million police cam body footage instances of people being shot by the police with undue force. And moreover, if you have done something kind of wrong, like mm -hmm. say you're carrying some um, amount of marijuana on you before it was legalized, it means that if you're not part of the surveilled population, you're much less likely to be caught up in the criminal justice system than if you are a part of the surveilled population. So the police have the ability to create criminal justice outcomes, not on the basis of who is more or less guilty, but based on who they choose to focus on. And that's exactly what's happening here. The police or the, the intelligence agencies could choose to focus on someone like Matt Taibbi because they are inconvenient to the uh, administration to the political infrastructure are shining a, f a flashlight on bad actions by the intelligence agency the agencies themselves. And it's not, a, you know, at a certain point, there's the issue of fundamental guilt or innocence. But there's also this issue of if you just look hard enough in a certain place, are you going to find something that's technically wrong? Are you going to be able to have a situation like we saw in Brazil where there was some technical corruption that got uh, Lula mm -hmm. thrown into jail? Um, and are people going to finally wake up and realize that, just, that this idea that, well, if you didn't do anything wrong, you shouldn't be concerned, is a license for these kind of organizations to terrorize folks? Yeah, it's never been true. Well, if you, people will say, well, if you've done nothing wrong, you have nothing to hide. Right. That's not how it works. Because right. you, could have done, and you also could have truly done nothing wrong. They investigate you. And then in the course of the investigation, you, may, you have some interaction with them uh, where you, you don't speak with perfect truth because you recall things differently, and then they'll, they'll get you on perjury, obstruction of justice, something like that. Even if you didn't do anything wrong, you have to be very wary of these, of these actions they can subject you to. Yeah. So uh, I, I, was, I was very chilled to see this. Uh, the IRS should back off uh, just to remove the potential that this has anything to do with uh, the testimony that uh, Matt Taibbi offered and the work he is doing to expose these same exact agencies for, in my view, violating the First Amendment rights of America Americans, at least violating the ethos of free speech that should prevail in this country. Yeah, yeah, sure. We'll have more rising right after this.